Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is a man who's a multiple-time Super Bowl champion. He's a former general manager. He's a TED Talker. He's a live show host. He's a podcast host. He's an email newsletter founder. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Lombardi. Yeah, Lombardi. What's up, guys? Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Appreciate you having me. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Thank you for moving up a day. Obviously, we're going to be off for two days, so we're trying to get all our friends in. We're so thankful that you're able to make time for us. Uh, Turkey, ham guy, what is your go-to? Uh, I, I'm a fat guy. I eat everything. I mean, there's nothing on that plate that I'm not going to eat. You know, I mean, come on now. I, I mean, I'm not a, tur- I'm not, a, the only thing I'm not touching is the peak is the pumpkin pie. You can have that. I'll, I'll eat apple. I'll eat any other kind of pie, but the pumpkin you can have, oh, but you know, I, I'm a carb guy. So the stuffing is going to be a tough thing to stay away from. Bingo. And you the know mash. the deal. And the yeah, mash. You know the deal. You've said it. You've already said lasagna? it. Lasagna? Yeah. What type of lasagna we got at the Lombardi family on? Well, the, the, there's only one kind. It's the one my my wife makes yeah. an incredible lasagna. It's with a bechamel sauce. It's got oh, meat in it. Bechamel. It's really good, and that's the best way to start. I mean, you just eat your way through it, and then you drink your way through the night as we watch Tua navigate under forty degree weather, which he hasn't been able to do so well. And we get to watch how how great is Lambeau Field on Thanksgiving night to see the pageantry of that yes. and the fans. All I mean, I I couldn't think of a better setting to end the night than in Lambeau Field watching the Dolphins play the Packers. It might have a Steelers, Browns uh, type snow, Ooh. although they're not calling for it. You never know. <laughs> you literally never know whenever the weather gets that cold. It'll be 27, I think, at kickoff. Then uh, in the afternoon, Tommy Cutlets is not looking likely to play <laughs> for the New York Giants. They say Drew Locke probably wow. going to be the starter for the Giants taking on the Dallas Cowboys. And then let's talk about that first game there. 1230 in the middle of everybody's meal or hangout time. Caleb Williams and the Bears, who've been playing well just can't win a close game against the dominant Detroit Lions how do we feel about that game Lombo what are your thoughts on that well I think look you know that this Detroit team has been so good but the one thing we haven't seen them is dominate on Thanksgiving Day right I mean I think that they are a team that has been uh that have won on that haven't been able to cover their own three straight up on the holiday, they're two and one against the spread. So huh. I think to me, this is kind of an important. Now they're going into the game with injuries. David Montgomery says he's going to play. I'm on St. Brown says he's going to play. But look, a, a ten and a half point dog. I think this this Lions team has been so good. They don't take anybody lightly. They play to a standard. You know, you just had Nick on, and Nick was so big about this in terms of when he was coaching and what he wanted his team to do. It's a Belichickian principle. We play to a standard, right? We play to something that's bigger than the one-loss record. Bill Walsh wrote a book called The Score Takes Care of Itself. That's what he's talking about, and that's what impresses you most about this Lions team. I think for the Bears – They've got to play better defense. You know, look, Matt Eberflus's scheme is all predicated on can we get four guys to bother the quarterback because we're going to play zone. Last week they played Minnesota. They sack Montez Sweat, sacks him on overtime, sacks Sam Darnold for a six-yard loss. What happens? They throw two checkdowns and get a first down because they're playing zone and there's too many easy throws. The great Bud Carson, the former defensive coordinator, head coach of the Cleveland Browns, he used to say all the time, if you don't harass the receivers or harass the quarterbacks, they're going to throw it too good. They're going to throw it too well, and they're going to be at 70%, and that's what happens to these teams that run this scheme. It's crazy. Uh, I feel like this is no offense to anybody, okay? This is no offense to anybody. None taken. But you could be a really good D coordinator if you have four guys that can get to the quarterback. Yeah, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that's yeah, like kind sure of – yeah. Like, I don't want to say anybody, but if you have some football yeah. knowledge and you have four great D linemen – and you can get to the quarterback, you can do a lot of shit. That frees up a lot of things for a lot of players mm-hmm. and a lot of teams, which leads me to, is that the Niners' problem, you think? What, what is your yep. thought on, is that the Niners' issue, you think? That's exactly what the Niner issue is. Look, they've had so many great players in that defensive front, but they've lost them, right? The, to me, to run the Niners' scheme, to run the Jet scheme, to run the Indianapolis scheme, to run – the scheme that that these teams of Eberflus, Chicago, that are zone teams that want to be able to drop seven, read the quarterback's eyes, and then break on the ball. They, you have to have at least two blue chip players in the defensive front and at least three red chip players. You got to be really good, right? You got to be really good. And unfortunately for the 49ers, losing Hardgraves, they don't have a three technique. See, here's the problem: the hardest thing to find in football, besides a left tackle, is a three technique, a dominating three technique, right? Let, why is why are the Eagles so good? Jalen Carter's in shape and he's playing great. Three techniques are hard to find. 
because the Warren Saps of the world that you have to slide the protection to all the time, those guys create more problems than the edge rushers who you could chip. But when you've got a slide and then you have another player inside who can beat one-on-one blocks, it's tough. And I think the Niners losing all those players. They have Bosa, but then they don't have any really red chips or blue chips in their line, and that affects their coverages. It feels like it's easy to read if a defense is good or not by if their defensive line is good. Now, on the offensive side, it's easy to tell if they're good if the offensive line is good. AQ has a question yep. for you, Lombo. Yeah, Lombo, yep. I watch film every week, and I it, it's I find three great offensive lines, and then after that, it's like a it's a crapshoot yeah. to find four and five, right? Why do you think there are so few offensive line that are very good right now? I think a lot of it is by the collective bargaining agreement. I think because when you started in the league and when I started in the league, you know, we had Kirk Ferns coaching our offensive line and we could go inside and take guys like Orlando Brown and Wally Williams, guys that weren't drafted, and put them in that indoor facility and work on their fundamentals and get them better and really coach them and get an off-season program into it. I think a lot of it has to the fact that we're having a hard time training them. And then Bill Parcells used to say this all the time, we can only take from colleges what they give us. Right, And in college, everybody's in a two-point stance. Nobody's rolling their hips. Nobody's coming off the football. Everybody's just side-blocking, and we're not getting development. And so the process of it, getting an offensive lineman is further behind now than it ever was, even when they were running the wishbone in college, right? And so we, we drafted Shaq Mason in the fourth round. He never passed protected in his life, and that was a good thing. You know why? He didn't have any bad habits. So when you take a guy like that, you can teach him. And I think development's been really bad. And I think the obvious is there's just not enough players. I think you've got to look differently. You've got to find some defensive linemen that aren't very good, that were wrestlers in high school, that were also played offensive line in high school, and get them over to the offensive line. Yeah, wrestlers, seemingly offensive linemen who have a wrestling background Mm -hmm. are good because leverage, and they know everything like that. How were you as a wrestler in high school? Uh, I won my first match, and then I lost 17 straight, and I I went right back to basketball. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. AQ is an anomaly. Okay, he was terrible at wrestling. Uh, but he's Chip, good. I love your honesty. Yeah, hundred percent. He's gonna lie, and we would have believed it. No, I was we a damn good <laughs> basketball player, though. No, we yeah. wouldn't have. Yeah, he's high school Hall of Fame basketball player, but yeah, his perfect. wrestling record is shite, absolute <laughs> shite. Yep. All right, last question here because we're uh, running up against it. Ty has one for you, Lombo. What about the Black Friday game, Chiefs Raiders? Obviously, last year the Raiders beat the Chiefs on Christmas Day, but. This Raiders team this year is just a complete shit show, just awful. And then the Chiefs on the other side, I mean, they're still winning, but kind of the same deal. They haven't put everything together. They escape Carolina, who's playing a little bit better. But how do you see that game on Friday shaking out? I don't think Andy Reid has to do any motivation because Antonio Pierce took care of that for him in the offseason. Because remember when Antonio Pierce said they've got the magic formula to beat Patrick Mahomes, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to find out on Black Friday. I don't think that's true. And they're playing worse defense this year with Antonio Pierce as their head coach than they were last year when he was just the interim. So to me, there's problems in Raider land. And look, last time they played in Kansas City on Christmas Day, Aiden O'Connell didn't complete a pass after the second quarter. After the first quarter, there was no more completions by him, and he's going to start in this game. I think this is going to be a route for the Chiefs. I think the Raiders are in. What we're going to see over this week are the two teams who might be picking first in the draft, the Raiders and the Giants. Okay. Wow. All right, before we get out of here, that seems like a futures bet. Uh, do you have any picks for the weekend that we need to be on? I do. I love that. You know what I love? I love the Chargers this week. I really love the Chargers. Everybody thinks it's going to be a short week. I think Jim Harbaugh will get his team ready. I think if Quinton Johnson catches a couple passes, that game's closer, even though I was on the Ravens in that game. But I like the Chargers. Anytime Atlanta plays a tough-minded team with physicality, they struggle. I think this Charger team bounces back. Okay, it's a long flight over there. Um, you talked about being on the Ravens. 70% of the money we were on the Ravens. I was on the Ravens. Uh, the entire Hammer Don. Don show was on the Ravens. The Monday Night Football Countdown show, everybody on it was on the Ravens. It's wild that that hit. I'm thankful it did, though. Happy Thanksgiving, Lombo. We love you, Same man. Same to you guys. Thank you for having me. Appreciate Thanks. you. Thanks, Pat. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Lombardi. Yeah, Lombo. All right.